Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said cognac, ooh, ooh. I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a fancy blonde, fabulously dressed. I'm Cognac with Elaine, and we are here at RJD Gallery in Bridgehampton, and it's all about this fabulous art show, Boundaries. And I'm here with Richard J. D'Amato and his staff and the people that help him put this gallery together. He has probably one of the most beautiful galleries here in the Hamptons, let alone Bridgehampton. So, Richard, darling, tell us about... Tell me about all this beautiful art that we're seeing here today, this evening. Well, we're very lucky to have the art we have after the fire of December 16th. I know. That was a chasing thing. Uh, but Eve worked very hard and helped us find artwork, and the artists were very productive. And uh, now we also have Casey on the far right, who is uh, an assistant art director, and she's also helping us. And we're expecting many good things to come. We're very fortunate to have a space three times the size. Yes, this is three times. I'm going to go upstairs and look at some of the art upstairs as well. I didn't yeah. even get to go upstairs because well, I, I don't was... know if we let you up there yet. <laughs> it's like so compelled just to look at the artwork here. The artwork on this floor well, is Well, you need just... to get a written note to go upstairs. It's for only special people. <laughs> okay. Now, tell my audience 
how many pieces are we looking at right here uh, in the boundary right series? Now, right now we have uh, 3,200 pieces up. <laughs> no, I don't know what I have. I haven't counted them. Do you have any idea? What would you say? Well, we represent about 30 different artists from around the world. Um, we are expanding our roster, which is really exciting. We've added sculpture as well to the gallery, which is wonderful. So we have now sculpture from France, um, from Spain. Uh, hanging right now, I'd say there's about 60 pieces that you could explore. Um, all, diff 70, yeah. all different medium, um, but still all staying within our very specific genre of realism. So it's a really exciting uh, exploration into the genre of realism. So definitely stop by and check it out. I, well, I'm doing that right now. And you, Dolly. You can check it out if we're not moving. <laughs> you tell me, tell me, Dolly, why, why should everyone Case from position. all over the world, why should everyone come to this gallery? What's, what is so special about RJD Gallery? Um, Richard has an amazing ability of connecting with artists and the artists we have represented here are the top caliber in the world. They are some of the most talented painters I've ever seen. And oh my god, I just took a look. <laughs> There's artists from all over the world here. Yes ma'am, yeah. If you want to go on a global trip it's a lot of fun Then you have all these places to stay. <laughs> Richard, tell my audience, where did your love of art come from? Uh, art is the only course in my entire life that I always had straight A's. I started out in uh, elementary school and I had a crush Don't on my, <laughs> no, I had a crush on my fifth grade art teacher and that was that. Was she sexy? Oh yeah, she was cool. She, she looked like a flapper from the 20s. Really? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I was only like 10 so your perspective is, you know. Mrs. Plastino, oh my God. Oh, she was Italian. Yeah, well, it figures. <laughs> so anyhow, but, uh, you know, and then when I started college, I was an art and biology major, dual major, but the, the biology, I mean, the art department said, you know, we only have 50 seats and you have to go full time, but the pressure was definitely pre-med, so that's where I went for a while. Do you collect, I'm sure you have thousands of paintings in your home. Not thousands, but a lot. and. I started, I still have the Risk and Monopoly game from when I was about 10. I still have my bicycle from when I was 16. It's a Fuji bike, it weighs about 20 pounds. I used to go to work and school with it. So I've always been a bit of a crazy collector. And as I've aged, I've learned to get quality over quantity. And that's a problem for most collectors because then you want to get rid of the things you know you no longer want as you go into quality. And we're very proud and excited that we feel we have some of the best art in the world. Well, you, I've been coming to your gallery for many years, and you certainly do have beautiful pieces of art here. We have wonderful pieces of art, and I think we have the most friendly, honest staff one could find. Do you have a favorite classic artist? Well, when you say Someone classic. Someone that really inspired, inspires you. I mean, going back to like Florence and Milan, and well, Michelangelo. Um, well, I mean, I, 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 I have a lot of Thomas Hart Benton pieces. Um, that period I like a lot. I'm lost for words at the moment, which is unusual for me. <laughs> and do you have a favorite here in the gallery? Do you have a favorite piece of art in the gallery right now? Um, no, I, I, I sit with this art every day, all day. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. <laughs> and what I really do, are, you I'm surrounded by beauty every day. I'm, there's no favorite. Each one speaks to you at a different mood and time in your life. And throughout, throughout your experience here, one may speak to you at one moment. I mean, when you get to share an artwork with a collector who walks in and really get to speak about an artist and where their passion is coming from, suddenly that piece comes alive for you again. And, you know, you start to just feel that enthusiasm. Um, and you see it differently at that time. Sharing it is the best part. Casey? I, I also want to ask you, uh, what made you decide to show this collection Boundaries and why did you name it? Why did you people name it Boundaries? Um, the show is called No Boundaries and yep and it's about art that pushes your boundaries. Um, it takes you to a new place. It's magic realism so it looks very real and yet it plays with your mind. It plays with the imagery and what you're seeing and um, references it different really, things. It really does play with your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Those jeans. I don't even wear jeans and I love that paint. <laughs> she loves the jeans. The jeans are beautiful. 
But you have to be really big. <laughs> and they only come in a pair. <laughs> Yeah, what's, what's next for the galley? What are you going to be showing next? That's a good question. Art Market. Art Market. We're going to be at Art Market. We took a large booth. Um, are you going? You are, I'm sure you're going to be at Art Southampton, right? Art Southampton is not happening this year. Oh, Art, Art, Southampton, Art Southampton left. Art Hamptons closed. And they're not coming back. And there's Art only Hampton. there's only going to be Art Hamptons, which is going to be directly Art across Market. the street. Art, Art Market, sorry. Art Market. Art Market. Oh my God, a lot of editing. <laughs> <laughs> we love the mistakes, don't worry. Our yeah, 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 I know, it's okay. Well, our next show is going to be the end of June. Basically, we have a show every month um, throughout the season. So June 20th, I believe it is, uh, July 22nd, August 19th is a solo for Andrea Coach. So definitely check out the website and you're able to yeah. see all our exhibitions. Yeah. The, and the, the, the end of July, we're gonna do a show called uh, Girls Next Door. The Girl Next Door. The Girl Next Door. Girl Next Door. Yeah. And we have two extremely talented women whose work sells way in advance, Katie O'Hagan and Rachel Mosley. The record for Rachel Mosley is we hung one about six months ago. It sold within five minutes. The, prior to that, it was an hour for her. Um, Andrea's work, which will be the end of August, there'll be 10 paintings. We've already sold eight sight on scene by size. We started selling them last October. Um, so it's great and exciting to have young artists that uh, months in advance, you actually sell their work. It's fabulous. It is fabulous. Yeah. It certainly is. I want you to tell my audience where we could go to learn more information about this fabulous gallery. What is the website? RJDGallery.com. Gorgeous. Easy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Always a pleasure, Cognac. Thank you, honey. Don't go away yet. You have to give her Thank you so much. Thank Don't you go away so yet. Much. We'll be back in a moment, darlings. More interviews right here in the Hamptons. Keep watching. Big champagne kisses. <laughs> I was diagnosed in 2008. 2006. 2010. I was 32. I was 30. I was only 28 years old when I found out I had breast cancer. Last year, nearly 200,000 women in the United States were diagnosed with breast cancer. That means a woman in the U.S. is told she has breast cancer every two minutes. This video is two minutes long. Every woman on the planet is at risk for breast cancer. And that risk only increases if someone in your family has been diagnosed. So get checked. Check yourself. Perform routine breast exams at least once a month. It's easy, you can do it in the shower. If something doesn't feel right, it's up to you to find out what's wrong. Tell your doctor about any lumps or any unusual skin irritation. Itching or pain. Get regular mammograms starting by at least age 40 and every year after that. Breast cancer may not be preventable. But knowing the facts and knowing your body will increase your chances of finding any cancer early. Early detection means it's easier to treat. These are your sisters we're talking about. Mothers, daughters, friends, neighbors. Please, stay aware. Stay healthy. Stay alive. I survived breast cancer. I survived breast cancer. Sobreviví cancer en los senos. I survived breast cancer. I am still fighting breast cancer. Talk to your doctor. Get regular mammograms. And perform routine self-exams. It's as easy as taking a shower.
Friends, welcome back. I'm Cognac Willa Lane, and we are here at this beautiful gallery in Bridgehampton, New York. And I'm here with the director. He's going to introduce himself and tell us the name of the gallery. Hi, it's Nicolas Hoyos. I work with Mark Borgi Fan Arts. Uh, we do have several galleries besides the one in Bridgehampton. We have a location as well in Manhattan and in Palm Beach. And well, we're getting ready to start the season for the summer. Yes, it's very exciting. And you have a gorgeous space here with so many beautiful paintings. Right now you're having a series of, it looks like automobile, like Steve McQueen and pictures of cars and racing. I love all the theme of it. It's just really, really beautiful. Can you tell my audience when your next show is going to be? Yeah, for the 6th of July, we're going to start with Bethy Thompson, and, but we like to have an eclectic mix where we bring a contemporary art, like the work that Thompson does, and mix it with masters, especially from the American school, like the Kooning and uh, Nolan. And the idea is to give our clients an eclectic mix of possibilities, bring the sexy of contemporary, and mix it also with blue chip art that has proven to be over and over again a good investment altogether. Well, your artwork is beautiful, and I can't wait to see the show that you're going to have in July. Tell me, audience, where can we go to find out more information about this fabulous gallery? Yes, uh, the best way is probably visit our be uh, website, which is borgi.org, which is B like boy, O R G H I dot O R G. You'll find more about the different locations and all the artists that we carry. Wonderful. Thank you so much, darling, for that wonderful little interview. Thank you so much. And we'll be back in a moment, darlings. More interviews right here in the Hamptons. Keep watching. Peace, champagne, kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fata. What kind of girl? It's been a Cry Baby Productions, darlings.